This morning we're going to be getting into fractions. Um, you guys have studied fractions in the past. A fraction is a part of a whole, okay? Um, and we're going to start by talking about unit fractions very briefly. Unit fractions is something you guys studied in fourth grade, okay? So unit fractions is like, say, here's our circle. You guys all have seen the circle when it comes to fractions. If we split our circle into four pieces, each piece is a fourth, okay? So a fourth is a unit fraction, it's a specific size. If we take the same size circle and split it in half, each fraction is a half. So a fourth is a different size than a half, okay? A fourth is smaller than a half. Um, I mean, we might as well throw a third in there, okay? Except that my circle, the thing is, since I just made the mistake, I should probably let you know, when you're comparing fractions, they have to come from the same size whole. So my circle wasn't as big as the other circles. And it's really hard to do when you're drawing to make them all the same size. So you do the best you can, which is why sometimes it's better to know mathematically which one's bigger. So let's say we make thirds. So my unit fractions here, here is a fourth. That is one size. Here is the third. That is another size. And here is a half. That is another size. Okay? So what happens is when I'm adding fractions, I can add fractions that are the same size. So I can add fourths to fourths. Okay, and I can add thirds to thirds, and so on and so forth, okay? So as long as they're the same size, I can add them together. So when you're adding fractions, remember, you have two-fourths and one-fourth for a total of, there's my one and there's my two, for a total of three-fourths. So remember when you're adding fractions, you're adding how many of those sized pieces that you have. So you add what we call the numerator, which is the top number, okay? And the denominator, which is the bottom number. And let me just to make sure you can see it stays the same, okay? So you add the top and the denominator stays the same because you're adding how many fourths you have. Okay, if you added the denominators, you would end up with a denominator of eight, but we're not adding eighths, we're adding fourths. So you can't change the denominator when you're adding fractions, okay? And so the same thing here, if I was adding thirds, it would be one third plus one third would be two thirds. If my bottom denominator was 15, let's say I cut my circle into 15 pieces, I was adding three fifteenths plus five fifteenths, I would add three plus five is eight, and the bottom number would be 15. So it's pretty easy, okay? Um, unfortunately, it's not always quite that easy because sometimes we don't always add fourths and fourths. Sometimes we do something like add a fourth plus a third, but this is gonna cause a problem because they're not the same size, okay? My bottom numbers are different and I just told you you can't add the bottom numbers. So then what do you do? Think about it this way. If I had apples and I had oranges, okay? So let's say I had apples and I had oranges and I had, I don't know, two oranges and three apples and I wanted to add them together. Well, I don't have five apple oranges because an apple orange isn't a thing. I suppose I could make it a thing. It'd be a really weird fruit. But anyway, um, it's not a thing. So I'm not going to get five apples. I'm not going to get five oranges. But what I am going to get is five pieces of fruit. So if I find something that they have in common, then I can add them together. I can't add apples and oranges together and get five of them. But I can add apples and oranges together and get five pieces of fruit. Because what do apples and oranges have in common? That they're fruit. So the same thing's going to be true for my fractions, okay? So I can't add a fourth and a third, but I can find something that a fourth and a third have in common. And I can change them to what that common thing is. And then I can add them because they will be the same, okay? So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, gee, I have to find something in common between these two denominators. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the multiples to find a number that they have in common. We've talked about multiples a few times, okay? And I'm going to find what's called the LCM or the least common multiple, okay? All right. So I'm going to erase some of my pictures here to make some more room, and I'm going to move my problem over a little bit. I'm going to move that. So we had one-third plus one-fourth. We cannot add them together the way they are because the denominators aren't the same. So we're going to find something about them that is the same by using their multiples and finding the least common multiple. So what I do is I have to find the multiples of my two denominators. So my two denominators are three and four. So I'm going to list my multiples of three. Okay, starting with three. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. I'm going to list a few, okay, to start. And then I'm going to list my multiples of four. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to list my multiples until I find the smallest, which is the least, right? Until I find the smallest number they have in common. All right? Now, I went all the way up to 18 here, but when I started with 4, I noticed, hey, both 3 and 4 have a multiple of 12. So what that means is, is if I make both denominators 12, I will then be able to add them together. Now, there's another step, though, okay? I can't just change 1 third, okay? So I couldn't just take, say, 1 third and change it to 1 12th because 1 3rd and 1 12th are not the same size. All right, so if we had like our circles, okay, I'm going to try to make them the same. So if I had 1 3rd and then 12, oh goodness. So that's thirds cut into four pieces. Okay. One twelfth is not the same size as a third. One twelfth would be one of these. One third is one of these. Okay, so I can't just say, "Oh, I'm going to change one third so it has a denominator of twelve. Okay, but one third is the same size as four twelfths. So what I'm going to do is I have to change both of these numbers so they have a denominator of twelve. So what I do is I take one third. And I want to change it so it has a denominator of 12. So I ask myself, what did I multiply 3 by to get 12? If I multiply 3 by 4, I get 12. So 3 times 4 is 12. So whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So if I make the bottom 3 times bigger, I have to also make the top or the numerator 3 times bigger. So I can change this to 12, and I just have to multiply the top by 4 as well. So, whoops common mistake. Okay, so one-third becomes four-twelfths, and then I can do the same thing for a fourth. I take a fourth, and I want to change it so the bottom number is 12, because remember they have 12 in common. Okay, I have to think to myself, four times what is 12? Four times one, two, three. Four times three is 12. So I can change the bottom number to 12 as long as I, or Yes, I can change the bottom number to 12 by multiplying by 3 as long as I also multiply the top number by 3. So if I do that, I get 1 fourth becomes 3 twelfths. So what that means now is now I can add them together because they're the same. So I can do 3 twelfths plus 4 twelfths, which is going to be, and remember you just add the numerators, 3 and 4 is 7, denominator stays the same, 7 twelfths, okay? We don't ever add the denominator, which is why we had to go through all the trouble of changing it, all right? Um, that being said, that was our least common multiple. Um, let's do another one really quick because our numerators are not always going to be 1, okay? So let's say we had um, 1 half plus two fifths, okay? I gotta find the least common multiple for two and five. I have to change them so they have the same denominator. So I'm gonna list the multiples of two and the multiples of five. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Oh, wait a minute. 
multiples of five, five, ten. I don't have to go any further. I already found a number they have in common. They have ten in common. So what that means is I have to change both one half and two fifths so that they share a denominator of ten. Okay, so one half, I have to change it so it has a bottom number of 10 because my LCM is 10, my least common multiple is 10. All right, so I think to myself, two times what is 10? Well, two times five is 10. So if I multiply the bottom by five, I have to also multiply top by five. So one half becomes five tenths. Okay, now I have to change the two fifths. So I'm gonna do two fifths has to change to tenths, so I'm going to ask myself, hmm, 5 times what equals 10? Well, 5 times 2 equals 10, so if I multiply the bottom by 2, I have to multiply the top by 2. So 2 times 2 equals 4, okay? So in this case, I would have 1 half would be 5 tenths, plus 2 fifths would be 4 tenths, and I would get 9 tenths, which is almost a whole. 